Hello, welcome. Good morning from Bom Brazil. Can you hear us well? Bom dia, uh, Isabella. Good to be with you all. Very great start. So we have been uh, learning with our um, past experience that people in London are learning how to speak Bom dia very well. <laughs> so thank you for the warm introduction and to try to speak Portuguese, but I will say to Conrado that I don't know you yet. However, we share a huge network and you are very much involved with Hout EF. That's why I feel so honored to introduce you. And please, the stage is yours. Thank you, Isabella. And thank you, Conrado. And thank you, everybody, for the uh, warm welcome. I'm still learning my Portuguese, so uh, bear with me on this one. Um, it's a real privilege to be with you today. Um, you know, uh, Isabella, I know we don't uh, know each other too well, but yes, I have a huge amount of time for your organization and the work that you do. And Conrado, uh, you know, always great to uh, accept your invitation, my friend. And um, I, I think the venue that you're all in today is phenomenal. Uh, so next time I want to come in person <laughs> for sure. Um, so. Uh, I was going to just spend a few minutes talking a bit about uh, the rise of generative AI, this topic that is on the top of everyone's mind, but in particular what the implications are for L&D and, and, uh, and how we need to dial up human capabilities. So if it's okay, I'm going to bring you through a few slides and then we can maybe have a, a conversation and a, a Q&A uh, if that's okay. So um, let's begin. I think there's three things that I wanted to cover today. First one is two, three questions. One, why do we think this is a platform shift? And we'll talk a little bit about what I mean by a platform shift. The second is how is it changing work? I would say fundamentally forever. And how should we respond? How should we in the L&D or HR community respond? So this is the, these are the three questions that I'd like to pose. So if we start with the first one, why is this a shift? You know, um, AI is not new, okay? It's been around for decades. In fact, Microsoft has been doing AI for decades. I don't know if you remember this guy. Um, don't worry, he's not coming back. But it's not new, but what is new is that this really feels different. We're in a new era. We have these powerful new foundational AI models with incredible, uh, making them incredibly accessible through natural language interfaces. And this is the, the new era of AI. And if you think about it, for years, AI powered search and social media has been serving up these recommendations for us and about us. Somewhat consuming AI on autopilot. But now we're moving to an era of co-pilot, which is very different. It becomes a key productivity tool. And I'll probably talk a little bit about Copilot today. But first of all, I wanted to pose a question. This is not a polling question. This is more for us just to think and reflect. And I'm wondering whether, whether people know the answer to this. You know, How long did it take mobile users, mobile phone users to reach 100 million users? And there's a few options here I've given you to think about maybe 16, seven or four and a half years. So I would think about that, what you think this, the answer might be. And now I'm going to share you what, what the answer is. It's pretty amazing. It took uh, 16 years to reach 100 million users for mobile, seven years for internet and four and a half years for Facebook. Chat GPT took two months. So this is less of an adoption curve and more like a vertical a vertical line. And so this is one of the reasons why we call this a platform shift. And it's bigger, it's as big, if not bigger, as some of the fundamental uh, shifts in the industry, like the introduction of PC, mobile, internet, or, or social media. The second question that I posed at the beginning was, how is it changing work? 
Um, and I think to explain this, you need to think about why Copilot is so badly needed as a productivity tool. Um, to answer this question, I wanted to refer to the Microsoft Work Trend Index, really great resource. Uh, the URL is on, this, on the page here. This is a, a research that we've done at the company, 31,000 people over 31 countries and using data from different sources. But the, the, um, the key thing here is what the research tells us about how people are responding and, and reacting to the changing nature of work as a result of AI. And the data tells us that digital debt is costing us innovation. Now, what do I mean by digital debt? What does this mean? Well, in today's workplace, I believe it's easier than ever to communicate, but harder than ever to keep up. I certainly feel that often, uh, feeling overwhelmed. You know, Teams messages, emails, WhatsApp messages, the amount of content we have to uh, consume. And so, it's easier than ever to communicate, but harder than ever to keep up. And this is coming through in the research. So 64% of employees are saying that they don't have enough time or energy to do their job, not to do it well, just to do the, the basics. 57% are saying that time is spent communicating and 43% uh, saying that time is spent creating. So AI gives us the opportunity to radically address and reduce this digital debt. And this requires us to revisit the alliance between us humans and technology. Is the audio okay? Yes, Tabert. Yes, it's perfect. Okay, I'll keep going. Thank you. So another reflection question, and this is maybe a little bit more controversial. So the question is how worried are we that AI might replace our jobs or affects materially or affect our jobs? And this is a question actually that we asked in the research as well. And the results are, are interesting. So nearly half of people say they are worried that AI will replace their jobs. Uh, but at the same time, 70% would delegate as much work as possible to AI to lessen their workloads. So this is a really interesting um, combination of results. Uh, people are weighed down by digital debt. Um, they're concerned about their jobs, but they also want to delegate and use AI to, uh, to make their lives easier. So this was the video that talked a bit about Copilot. And um, you know, it's a, 
a fantastic tool that um, we've all been using for quite some time. I hope many of you have started to experiment and use it. Um, but the key thing about this tool is that it's designed with the human at the center and very much the prompts are there to uh, help us really continue to be in control. So to use it as a co-pilot, not an autopilot. And we have to constantly um, check what's coming from this. But it really is a huge help. Um, and uh, this next slide, I think helps me, it was helpful for me to understand the value, the benefits. Um, let me just explain this a little bit more. So we think about when you're developing a document uh, or starting a piece of work, traditionally or typically you would start um, from scratch, right? And so you would really start at in, in average, at the average level. And then you would try and spend most of your time turning it into good and then hopefully delivering uh, when it's great at the great stage. I think with AI and with tools like Copilot, we have the opportunity to already begin at the good stage. It gives us the head start. Then we spend our time making it great. And then hopefully we, de we deliver in the outstanding level. So this was just a useful slide to, to see the value proposition of why this is a fantastic productivity tool um, to help us spend our time and our effort in the areas that uh, will be most beneficial. So um, we've talked about these first two questions. Why is this a platform shift? How is it changing work? Uh, that's great, Brian. We love this stuff. We're excited. But how can we support our people to adapt it to this change? And how does it, what does it mean for L&D, for skilling and for careers? I think there's two things um, that I would share, two big things. The first is what I would call demystifying AI. And so what does this mean? It means building a baseline understanding of this technology. And this is important because you know, in order to act responsibly and ethically, education is going to be critical. And that's critically important for, for us as, as l and professionals. Also, we have to contribute to our collective knowledge. That's not just, you know, ourselves and our teams or our customers, but also our family, the next generation. And lastly, it helps us by only by understanding the technology, can we uh, understand what is our role to complement that technology around human capabilities. So this is the first response. The second response is to dial up these human capabilities. And you know, I feel very strongly that, that this is critical. Um, this will be key to harnessing the power of AI. So what do I mean by human capabilities? These are the things that make us innately human, you know, our strengths as humans, our superpowers. Um, and these capabilities have been arguably always critical in business and in society, but they are now becoming the competitive advantage and they'll become the competitive advantage. I want to share three of them um, as some examples of uh, capabilities that our research is suggesting are going to be uh, critically important. The first is learning to learn. This is all about curiosity and this audience uh, knows all about this, but it's uh, going to be fundamental. And this is about leading with curiosity and curiosity about ideas being creativity, curiosity about people, which brings empathy, curiosity about self, which brings awareness. The second one is change adaptation. This is all about being an early adopter and willing to experiment. This is all about trying new things and willing to experiment. So being the change that we want to see. And then lastly, collaboration. Um, well, actually cooperation rather than collaboration. So collaboration is working together towards a common goal. Cooperation is sharing knowledge simply for the purpose of making a, uh, the collective more intelligent. So co-creating value and working in networks is going to be key here. So these are the three questions that we've covered today. We started with these three questions. Um, I think that this is a platform shift and we're moving from AI as autopilot to copilot. Digital debt is real and AI and copilot can help us as a productivity tool, freeing us up to do the important works of humans. And our response needs to be twofold, to demystify, help with education, and second of all, to dial up these human capabilities. 
just a last uh, couple of last slide for me, and then we'll hopefully take some questions. I really invite everyone to to uh, to learn more, and I know this community will do this. Um, this is something we need to run towards, not run away from. And so there's some uh, suggestions here around how we can do that. The first is check out the Microsoft Work Trends Index, some really interesting data around uh, how work is evolving. The second is just to try it and you know, use Copilot or other tools. Um, and there's some great uh, resources here. This is uh, uh, some resources from Jared Spataro, our CVP of Modern Work, uh, if you want to check that out. And then lastly, I think we have to help each other. So would welcome you to join the conversation with this community and also um, connect as well on, on LinkedIn, if you wish. Last comment from me. It's clear that we have to dial up these human capabilities in the era of generative AI. And it's, it's, uh, this is a, a pretty, pretty uh, uh, fundamental. But there's two questions I'd like you to consider. Are you, are you helping hire the talent, developing the talent for these human capabilities? And are we redesigning work with these capabilities in mind? I don't think we are yet. And I think this is the opportunity and this is what is exciting for this community for us to step into that space and to help the business make this change. So uh, thank you very much for listening to, uh, to, uh, to my comments. Thank you. I think this AI is, we, with no doubt, a hot topic for everyone, not just in HR, but in all areas. So we have received many questions, but we are going to choose two of them. And one is related to diversity and inclusion. Today, we kick off our session here with Ada, and she was uh, going through topics like um, diversity, inclusion, and equality. And how can we somehow protect AI to be a barrier for our companies become even more inclusive? Mm, it's a great question. Thank you for that. Um, I think bias is, is such an important topic for us to be uh, super conscious of. Um, and there's a lot of debate and discussion quite rightly around uh, how we navigate this with AI. Um, uh, what I would say is, I think um, even without AI, I think as humans, we are inherently biased and we have um, these flaws. So I think um, the, the principle that I personally, you know, hold true with, with using any of these uh, tools is that we are still in control. We still have to stay, keep responsibility and accountability in ourselves for actions. And, um, you know, I think we have to have healthy uh, skepticism around what we're being served up and what we're being recommended to make sure that we're, we continue to make uh, the right decisions and to be inclusive and diverse. So, you know, linking this topic of diversity and inclusion to AI is really important. For me, the answer is that we continue to be human centric and, um, and put the human in, in control. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I think that AI can help us to supercharge the human capacities and power. And we have one more question. That's for you. right, that's right. Uh, Brian, uh, AI is the subject, right? Uh, on South by Southwest this week was the subject and uh, people was uh, telling that last year was what is AI and uh, how does it work? And now is how? can we use it, right? So talking about mm -hmm. that, speaking of that, uh, this is the question. In a very practical, practical way, how can we use AI into learning and development strategies within our companies today? In a very, yeah. with, maybe with some example. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's three things for me. The first is probably obvious, which is how we are using it to, around content creation and, uh, and content curation. So, you know, a lot of, LN, I'm sure every L&D organization is exploring that and we're certainly doing that here at Microsoft. 
but I think this is pretty obvious. The second one though is more interesting for me, which is if we are finding that, that these tools more useful to accelerate and increase our ability to be able to produce content, learning content, well then so are users and so are, uh, you know, everybody out there. So I would, I would suggest, and Conrado, I know you feel strongly about this, that our role as learning professionals is moving away from being the owner of knowledge and the producer of content to being the enabler of, so away from culture to control, uh, from control to culture, right? And so the second yes. one is for us to continue to revisit what our role is, because AI is going to put into the hands of users the ability to be able to support their own learning. The third one is linked back to my presentation, which is our work as, as L&D. Uh, so the first two are around how AI is being used in the learning space. And the third one is around how I, AI is going to influence what our work should be. And increasingly our work should be to help the business adapt to change. Um, so these would be the three ways I think that AI is going to be of fundamental use um, in, in the learning and development and will affect what we do and how we do it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Many questions. I think we should send you just for curiosity, right? That's it, Black Battle. Yes, that's it. Thank you. And see you soon in Brazil or in London. Thank you for being with us. See you soon. See you soon. Thank you.